Well, hello and welcome. Just enjoying a nice cold glass of water. Did you know that your body is about 60% water, give or take? That we're constantly losing water from our bodies, primarily by going to the bathroom and, and through sweating. And to prevent hydration, we need to drink adequate amounts of water. And while there are different opinions on how much water you should be drinking every day, health authorities commonly recommend eight eight-ounce glasses, which equals two liters, or about half a gallon. This is called the eight-by-eight eight rule, and it's very easy to remember. However, some health gurus believe that you need to sip on water constantly throughout the day, even when you're not thirsty. Today we're going to be talking about thirst. Are you thirsty? We're going to talk about hydration. Apparently there's a little boy that was very aware of his need for water. A little boy was sent to bed by his father, and about five minutes later he called out, Dad! His father said, What? He said, I'm thirsty. Can you bring me a drink of water? He said, No, you had your chance. Lights out. Five minutes later, Dad, his father replied, what? I'm thirsty. Can I have a drink of water? I told you no, and if you ask again, I'll have to spank you. Well, five minutes later, you guessed it, Dad, his father replied, what? When you come in to spank me, can you bring me a drink of water? I don't know if you've ever been that thirsty, but uh, when we think about just the average thirst where a drink of water sounds good, maybe after a long walk or after working in the yard, but I'm talking about being really, really thirsty, where just the, your tongue kind of sticks to the roof of your mouth. A few years ago, a young Marine corporal named Joey Mora was standing on the platform of an aircraft carrier that was patrolling the Iranian Sea. Tragically, with the turbulence of the waves, he fell overboard. And his absence wasn't even detected for about 36 hours. So his search and rescue mission began immediately and it went on for another 24 hours. And no one could survive in the sea without a life jacket after 60 hours. His parents were notified that he was missing and presumed dead. And the rest of the story is one of those truth is stranger than fiction events. In fact, it's one that script writers would pass up as being unbelievable. But as Joey was treading water for his very life, four Pakistani fishermen found him about 72 hours after he had fallen from the aircraft carrier. He was treading water by clinging to a makeshift flotation device that he'd made from his trousers. It was a, a skill that's learned in most military and Red Cross courses on water survival training. But by the time that they found him, he was delirious. His tongue was dry and cracked, and his throat was parched. About two years later, he spoke on NBC News, and he recounted an unbelievable story of a will to live. He said it was God. It was God who kept him struggling to survive. His discovery by the fishermen, it really makes searching for a needle in a haystack look like a piece of cake. Joey said that as he was treading water for his very life, the one thought that took over his body and pounded into his brain was water water. While he was floating in the vast waters of the ocean, he was thirsty for real, pure water. Have you ever been thirsty to that degree? And I'm not talking about this. We all thirst for something. We long to feel loved. We long to experience happiness, and joy. 
we desperately search for meaning and for significance in life. And friends, when we come to church, when we come to worship, we're surrounded by an ocean of living water. And I think that that's one of the things that we miss the most about this time of social distancing is not being able to come together for worship because it is there that our souls thrive in the company of other believers as we partake of that living water together, as we listen to the word of God being taught and preached and the music, the hymns of the church that reflect scripture being sung out as we worship the Lord together, that hydrates our souls. During worship, when we sing, we're quenching our souls. When we hear the scripture, they're hydrating our souls. And as available as the gospel is to us, at least in this culture or this subculture of America, there are many others that still remain thirsty. Many who really have a desert sand soul, a dry soul. And why is that? Well, to be honest, there are so few that drink from the well that never runs dry. As Jesus met the woman at the well, he, he told her of a water that if she drank from that he had to offer, she would never thirst again. So why are so many souls in this world shriveled and dehydrated? Well, to understand, let's look first at physical thirst. There are a couple interesting facts about physical thirst. I shared one of them at the very beginning, that it's estimated that we need at least 64 ounces of water uh, going into our bodies every day to keep us hydrated and healthy. Thirst is something, though, when you, you break it down uh, by the way that our body functions, Thirst is something that we experience when the pituitary gland secretes two hormones into the body. One causes a physical reaction in the kidneys, and the other causes the more complicating activity of hypothalamus, which sends signals to the salivatory glands to reduce secretions. We could go into a lot of the scientific part of why we feel thirst, but I discovered many years ago that just thinking about thirst or just thinking about water can make you thirsty. Just thinking about thirst can really start that process of hypothalamus to begin in the body. And physical thirst, it can be excruciating. It can be painful and dangerous. Dehydration can get you into a serious difficulty in a hurry. And if you've ever been really thirsty, then you'll be much more able to connect with thirst in the spiritual sense. The story is told of a young student who went to his spiritual teacher and asked the question, Master, how can I truly find God? And the teacher asked the student to accompany him to the river which ran by the village and invited him to step into the water with him. When they got into the middle of the stream, the teacher said, please immerse yourself in the water. Well, the student did as he was told, and then suddenly the teacher put his hands on the young man, man's head and held him under the water. And immediately the student began to struggle. The teacher continued to hold him under. The student was thrashing and beating the water uh, and air with his arms, and still he was held under the water. And then finally, the, the teacher released the student, and the student shot up from the water, his lungs aching and gasping for air. The teacher waited a few moments, and then he said, when you desire God to the same level that you just desired to breathe, then you shall truly find him. When we have a desire to find God, to pursue him, to connect with him, and that desire is greater than our desire for our next breath, then that's when we will connect with a holy God. As dehydration draws the whole of our physical being to a longing for water, so a, a spiritual void in the same way will draw our spirit into the search for a deeper meaning in life. The psalmist expressed it with these words in Psalm 42. 
And we're going to read verse 1 down through verse 5. But before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you would help us as we read it today, that you would open our eyes, that you would open our hearts, that you would help us to be receptive to it and understand the only satisfaction that we're going to find in this world, the only quenching for our thirst that can be provided is through Christ. Honor yourself in our hearts as we're obedient to your word today, and we will give you the praise, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So the psalmist begins in verse 1 of Psalm 42. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God, with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God. For I shall again praise him, my salvation, and my God. The biggest holidays, the three major holidays celebrated in America would be Christmas and Thanksgiving and the 4th of July, as far as a secular uh, approach to holidays. Well, the Jewish people, they also love to celebrate holidays. They called their holidays feasts. There were three great national feasts in the Jewish religious calendar. The first was the Feast of Passover. The second was known as the Feast of Pentecost. And the third was known as the Feast of Tabernacles. Now we know from this reading that Jesus was speaking in this passage during the Feast of Tabernacles. And this was a high and happy and holy day in the life of the Jewish people. The Feast of Tabernacles, it was like Christmas and Thanksgiving and the 4th of July all rolled into one. And during that feast, the high priest would go to the pool of Siloam and he would take a golden pitcher, he would dip it into the water there, and he would carry it back to the temple. And once he arrived back at the temple, he would pour the water out on the altar of sacrifice. And at that moment, the Levites would blow the trumpets and the great crowd would cry out with a loud voice, With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. We find that passage in Isaiah 12.3. And there would be leaping and dancing and shouting and singing and great hallelujahs would fill the air. And it was right at this climax of this great feast that the Lord stood up in that crowd with a voice of authority and he cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drank. Jesus realized that all of the people were drinking from the river of ritual, from the river of religion. And after this day was over, they would go back to their same old fears, to their same old faults and failures and frustrations. And what was happening with that crowd is exactly what is happening to many today. They're drawing water from the wrong well. Many drink from the worldly well instead of the well of eternal life, the well of life, which is found only in Jesus Christ. And if you would like to gain a spiritual thirst, then listen to our words once again from John 7, 37. If anyone is thirsty, let them come to me and drink. And in order for us to gain a spiritual thirst, we must desire God's water. We must desire what only Christ has to offer. And if you notice the condition that Jesus sets forth, if anyone thirsts, if anyone thirsts, then let them come to me and drink. Now I thank God for that word, anyone. If anyone wants God, if anyone wants a relationship with God, 
they can have it. It's available to them. If anyone wants spiritual water, they can obtain it. If anyone seeks God, they can find him. Yet notice that this is specifically addressed only to those who are thirsty. The problem is that many people are just not thirsty. They have no thirst for God. They're not thirsty for a spiritual life. They thirst for the things of this world. And you can be assured that the world understands this need, this thirst. Recently, there was a catchy advertisement promoting a particular brand of beer. And the ad features the world's most interesting man. And he ended each advertisement with these words, Stay thirsty, my friends. Well, both Satan and the world understand that as human beings, we are seeking fulfillment, that we thirst. And Satan and the world are trying to control what we thirst for. But before we can have a close relationship with God, we must thirst for him. And we must stay thirsty for him. We must cry out as David did, God, my soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in dry and a weary land where there is no water. We find that in Psalm 63, 1. We will never have a close relationship with God until we first thirst after him. Do you have a deep spiritual thirst that Jesus speaks of? If not, then ask God to give you that kind of desire for him. For Jesus shares this glorious promise in Matthew 5, 6. He says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Friend, to satisfy a spiritual thirst, we must draw from the right well. We must draw from God's well. And to acquire a spiritual thirst, you, you must not only desire it, but you must come to Jesus to obtain it, to be quenched. Jesus shares the promise from his word in John 4.14. 4, Those who drink of the water that I give them will never, never be thirsty. God will lead you to the living water, but he will not make you drink. If you want to be filled, you, you must drink. Friend, drink the living water. Drink from the well of life, not from the cesspool of the world. Don't rely on your feelings. Don't rely on what feels good. Rely on God's promises. For the things of the world in the end will not satisfy you. They'll only empty you and leave you parched and dehydrated. If you're tired of living without a spiritual passion, if you are tired of living without a zeal for God, if you're tired of just going through the motions, if you're feeling like you are spiritually dry, the Lord invites you today to come to him, to come for spiritual renewal, to come to be refreshed, to be rehydrated. Remember our Lord's promise in John 7, 37, if, if anyone is thirsty, let them come to me and drink. Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty for God? Are you thirsty for a victorious life that only comes through knowing him and walking with his son? If so, then come. Come to Jesus and drink, and he will fill you to overflowing. This invitation only has two requirements, to be thirsty and then to drink. If anyone is thirsty, then let them come to me and drink. Stay thirsty, my friends. Stay thirsty for God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that for the hunger and the thirst that each of us experience uh, spiritually, that we know that you have given us something that will satisfy our souls for all of eternity. Jesus has been referred to as the bread and the water, the water of life. 
He told the woman at the well that if she would drink the water that he gave, she'd never thirst again. And for those of us who have been on this journey with you for some time, we can testify to the, to the goodness of, of your grace and, and your faithfulness in fulfilling that promise. Father, we pray today that you would meet the needs that are represented by each listener. That Father, you would help us to rehydrate ourselves, spiritually speaking, uh, by coming to Christ. We thank you for your word. We pray that it would uh, change us and transform us. Help us to be found faithful when Jesus comes. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We hope that you have a, a good day and a good week. And uh, if there's anything we can do for you, if you have questions, if you'd like to just inquire about our ministries and our church, you can reach out to us at hello at porter.church, and I promise you I'll get back with you just as soon as I get the email. So uh, God bless you again, and we pray that uh, you would find your satisfaction and that your thirst would be quenched uh, through Christ today.